Hello everybody, Thomas here and welcome back to SFF 180 and time once again for the mailbag. As you guys know, I had a skip week last week, so there's a pretty good stack of books uh, in the mail uh, to go through. So we're going to get through all of these. I'm going to try to do it as efficiently as I can. No real announcements except to say that uh, a review went up this morning before the mailbag. So go and check that out. Highly anticipated title. Uh, so I'm sure you'll be interested in that. Also, another review will be up this week at some point. And both of these were originally scheduled to go up last week during the week. I, I ended up in something of a slump last week and just in terms of production, writing, recording, things like that. Don't know what it is, but at least I'm over it now. And uh, things are back to being pretty productive, so I'm pleased with that. It's probably because the weather has improved a great deal. So, you know, that, that always, like, puts me upbeat again and makes me really feel like uh, creating. So. so that's good. So anyway, let's see what uh, we've got, shall we? All right, this first one, white envelope from Macmillan Publishers, so probably something from Tor. Well, this is a really exciting one to start out with. This is Radicalized, this new book by Cory Doctorow. And this is a collection of four novellas. It says, Four Tales of the Present Moment. Four urgent SF novellas of America's present and future in one thought-provoking new book. So, yeah, this is pretty exciting. It comes out March the 19th. Uh, so, what, uh, tomorrow. <laughs> and it says, A timely and important collection from one of the most on-pulse genre voices of our generation. These four urgent speculative novellas explore social, technological, and economic visions of today and what America could become in the near, near future. Unauthorized Bread is a tale of immigration, the toxicity of economic and technological stratification, and the young and downtrodden fighting against at all, uh, all odds to survive and prosper. In a model minority, a Superman-like figure attempts to rectify the corruption of the police forces he long erroneously thought protected the defenseless only to find his efforts adversely affecting their victims. Well, that sounds interesting. Radicalized is a story of a dark web-generated violent uprising against insurance companies, told from the perspective of a man desperate to secure funding for an experimental drug that could cure his wife's terminal cancer. The fourth story, Mosque of the Red Death, harkens back to Dr. O's walkaway, taking on issues of survivalism versus community. Wow, this, uh, this sounds actually really, really freaking exciting. All right, then. So this comes out in hardcover tomorrow from Tor Books. Uh, Corey Doctorow's Radicalized. And next up, big old package from Random Penguin. All right, and another exciting book due out tomorrow. Wow, this is terrific. Uh, this is Inspection, and it's the new book by Josh Mallerman, who is having a bit of a moment right now because Bird Box is the adaptation of his first book is this massive Netflix phenomenon. So uh, he's definitely ascending to the A-list now. Uh, all right, well, this one, yeah, like I said, tomorrow comes out from Delray Books and it goes like this. Boys are being trained at one school for geniuses, girls at another. Neither knows the other exists until now. Jay is a student at a school deep in a forest far away from the rest of the world. Jay is one of only 26 students, all of whom think of the school's enigmatic founder as their father. Jay's fellow peers are the only family he has ever had. The students are being trained to be prodigies of art, science, and athletics, and their life at the school is all they know and all they are allowed to know. But Jay is beginning to suspect that there is something out there beyond the pines that the founder does not want him to see, and he's beginning to ask questions. What is the real purpose of this place? Why can the students never leave? And what else is their father hiding from them? All right. Meanwhile, on the other side of the forest, in a school very much like Jay's, a girl named Kay is asking... They're you know, letters for names, I guess. A girl named Kay is asking the same questions. Jay has never seen a girl, and Kay has never seen a boy. Uh, as Kay and Jay work to investigate the secrets of their two strange schools, they come to discover something even more mysterious. Each other. Okay. I have read and reviewed uh, a lot of, at least a couple of Jay Mallerman's books for... Uh, my Halloween, because he usually, you know, qualifies as horror, I would say. And uh, I have been, meh, okay, lukewarm on his stuff before. But who knows what he's, what he's pulled off with this one. This could be interesting. But Inspection by Josh Mallerman. His new book comes out tomorrow from Delray Books. Ah, and here's another package from Parvis Press. They're the ones who sent the uh, If This Goes On anthology uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, this is a real emerging small press. I'm kind of... 
very happy to be getting books from them. Oh, wow. Yeah, this one is all kind of tied up in twine and it's got, you can't see it on camera, I'm sure, but it's got like this little skull and crossbones uh, thing in the middle of it. And they have included uh, a handwritten note, which I think is, you know, that really nice kind of personal touch that uh, only a small press could manage. It says, Mr. Wagner, hello from Parvis Press. We are an independent, well, I knew this. Come on, guys, you're an independent press. Uh, with national distribution and thought you and your audience or your readers might be interested in our upcoming release, Necropolis PD. Okay, it's hard to read this with the twine around it, but I don't wanna, can I remove it without like actually cutting the twine? I'd like to try that. Oh, and the skull thing is glued on. I feel, it's like they sent me this cool thing and I don't wanna break it, but I need to get the book out. What do I do? Okay, what if I just kind of like, what if I kind of like fiddled with it this way? I don't think it's going to stretch. This is like serious twine. <laughs> I don't have scissors in this room. I'll like literally have to unhook and like go and get scissors. Okay, I can work some of this promo stuff like out of the, uh, out of the twine without... I'll eventually have to cut it if I want to read this damn thing. But at least for now, I don't have to get up, take my mic off, do all of that. Alrighty then, here, here it is. This is a book called Necropolis PD. I finally at least got it to where we can see it, all right? And the author is Nathan Sumption, Sumption, S-U-M-S-I-O-N. I'm going to go with Sumption. That's an assumption. Okay, and this uh, folded up thing turns out to be an actual uh, letter and cell sheet. Here we are. Uh, this is out April the 2nd. And it's a hidden world fantasy combining mystery, horror, magic, and more than just a little humor. It lives at the intersection of Jim Butcher's Dresden Files and Neil Gaiman's Neverwhere, with a touch of LucasArts' Grim Fandango added in to keep it fun. All right, then. Uh, Jacob Green was just an average college student, but three months ago he ran through the wrong door and found himself trapped in the city of Meridian, a literal necropolis concealed from the modern world, made up of forgotten places and populated entirely by the dead. As the only living, breathing resident, Jake has struggled to scrape out an existence while waiting for the Necropolis Police Department to decide his fate. And it's not looking good. But when an unusual string of crimes hits the city, Jake's overseer and tormentor, NPD Detective Marsh, offers him a deal. Jake's life in exchange for helping them solve the worst series of crimes in the Necropolis' history. Like, don't they like, have detectives of their own? I mean, they're a police department. You'd think they'd have detectives. Or they'd just get some, you know random college student that they arrested and say, like, you help us. Like, what would he know? Yeah, oh, well, anyway. Someone or something is killing the dead. And if Jake can't figure out who's responsible, he could be next. I have so many questions <laughs> based on this synopsis alone. But uh, if the book is funny and cute, as I think books like this should be, you know, if you're going to try to do this kind of paranormal urban fantasy stuff, you know, you, it, it should be done with a very healthy sense of humor, because when this kind of book takes itself too seriously, it's deadly. But in any event, Necropolis PD uh, is available April the 2nd from Parvis Press. Huh. All right, then. Here's one that is unlikely to be tied up in skulls and crossbones. This is one from Random Penguin. All right, well, this appears to be the latest release in the uh, DC Icons series. And this is a series of uh, novels based on iconic DC superheroes. And they are written, uh, they're YA books, and they're written by very popular YA authors. Like I think uh, Lee Parduco wrote one, and Sarah J. Moss wrote another. And so now we have Superman, Dawnbreaker. And this is by Matt De La Pena. Uh, this, oh, this has been out. This came out on March the 5th. And yeah, this is uh, this action-packed novel introduces us to a young Clark Kent before he became Superman, an outsider with a dark past searching to find and keep his place in the world. All right, then. Okay, so uh, Superman Dawnbreaker, if you're a fan of this series, uh, is you know, it's the latest one, and it is out now. And this is what appears to be at least one, possibly two, very large books from Random Penguins. So uh, yeah, let's see what these are. All right, then. What I have here are a couple of finished copies of upcoming Random Penguin titles, and I was not expecting to get the finished copy so soon, but I'm glad I have. The first of these from Doll Books is Finder by Suzanne Palmer. I have talked about this on my anticipated science fiction list for this year. I've also uh, gotten the arc for this. Uh, so by now, you know, I've already talked about it a couple of times. But I believe this comes out the first week of April. 
And did they include us? No, they didn't. Okay, and it is about uh, basically a con artist and a repo man uh, who is uh, essentially on a job to recover or actually steal uh, a spaceship for a big shot crime lord. And he ends up getting involved in this sort of planetary civil war. And it sounds like it could be quite a bit of fun. His name is Fergus Ferguson, for one thing, and I just love that so much as a name for book protagonist that, yeah, I'm all over this one. So Finder by Suzanne Palmer, coming out uh, early in April from Doll Books. And the second book in this package is The War Within, the finished copy of the second book in the Great God's War trilogy by Stephen R. Donaldson. And I suspect uh, that this is very much traditional high fantasy in the Stephen R. Donaldson mode, right? And I don't know precisely off the top of my head the premise of this trilogy, but uh, given its title, my guess would be it's about a bunch of great gods and they're having a war, right? I mean, that's just logic, right? To deduce that. Okay, but this, I believe, comes out again first week of April in hardcover from Berkeley Books, The War Within. Okay, what have we here? More Random Penguin. All right, well, this is an arc uh, for the next Harry Turtledove. You know, Harry Turtledove, of course, being a uh, long, long-standing veteran of uh, first science fiction and now alternative history fiction. And, uh, and as I have discovered, he's a very salty man on Twitter. Very, very much so. Uh, fun, guy, fun guy to follow, really is. Uh, but this is called Alpha and Omega. Comes out uh, July the 9th. See this? This is interesting. First time I've seen one of these. This is like a, a cell card. It's a three by five card. And it's like everything that would be on a cell sheet is right here. How ridiculously practical is that? You know, good, good policy to follow. Thank you, Delray. Uh, the premise here is what would happen if the ancient prophecy of the end of days came true? It is certainly the last thing Eric Katz, a secular archaeologist from Los Angeles, expects during what should be a routine dig in Jerusalem. But perhaps higher forces have something else in mind when a sign presaging the rise of the Third Temple is located in America. A dirty bomb is detonated in downtown Tel Aviv, and events conspire to place a team of archaeologists in the tunnels deep under the Temple Mount. It is there that Eric is witness to a discovery of such monumental proportions that nothing will ever be the same again. All right, so sounds like Harry Turtledove is sort of tiptoeing into Dan Brown territory, except, of course, Turtledove is a guy who actually, like, knows history. And so it wouldn't be, like, chock full of really, really bad history channel level history, if you know what I mean. But Alpha and Omega, if you like this sort of thing, will be out July the 9th from Del Rey. Er, moving right along, we have yet more Random Penguin. This is a Random Penguin heavy week. And this feels like a mass market paperback. This is my good buddy Marshall Ryan Maresca's newest Maradane novel in mass market paperback. I've already gotten the art for this. The Maradane books, there he has something like 10 of them out now with, I think, at least a few more planned. And there are multiple story arcs, I think four, running concurrently in the series. And this one is the third book in the Maradain Constabulary story arc, which I, I would say are, you know, fantasy police procedurals, basically. And the way this one goes is the city of Maradain is vexed, vexed, by the Gearbox murders, a series of gruesome deaths orchestrated by a twisted mechanical genius with no motive and no pattern, inspectors Citrine Rainey and Minox Welling. The retired spy and the untrained mage are at a loss to find a meaningful lead in the case, at least until the killer makes his most audacious exhibit yet, over a dozen victims in a clockwork death trap on the floor of the death parliament. Okay, this has got a bit of a saw thing going on here. Uh, the crime scene is a madhouse, and political forces conspire to grind their investigation to a halt. The king's marshals claim jurisdiction of the case, corruption in the constabulary thwarts their efforts, and a special inquest threatens to end Minix's career completely. Their only ally is Dane Hildren, a provisional member of the Tarian Order, elite warriors trained in the art of protection. But Dane's connection to the Gearbox murders casts suspicion on his motives, as he might be obsessed with a phantom figure he believes is responsible. Hmm. While Citrine and Minox struggle to stop the gearbox from claiming even more victims, the grinding gears of injustice might keep them from ever solving these murders and threaten to dismantle 
their partnership forever. All right, so if you like cop stories and murder mysteries, along with your high fantasy, here you go. A Parliament of Bodies coming out, I'm guessing, yeah, very beginning of April, first week of April. Uh, or maybe it might be out now, because this actually says it's a March release. So uh, maybe this week, maybe out now. In paperback from Doll Books. And this next one, also from Random Penguin, is the third volume in a, uh, a YA series I regret that I have not yet uh, managed to tip into, but this is the final one in the trilogy, so it might be time. Uh, because they have always looked interesting to me. I think they have a very beautiful look. And uh, it's called the Blood Rose Rebellion series. The author is Rosalind Eves. And this volume is called Winter War Awakening. And this one comes out tomorrow in hardcover uh, from Knopf, Books for Young Readers. And, uh, well, let's see, what can I say that won't be spoilery? Well, it appears to take place in the real world because they mentioned the Hungarian army. Okay, so it's a primary world fantasy, but it uh, definitely has magical elements. But, uh, so it, but it involves, uh, you know, uh, magic and a war and what have you. So, uh, yes, Winter War Awakening, uh, the third volume following uh, The Blood Rose Rebellion and Lost Crow Conspiracy is out tomorrow in hardcover. In my more fanciful moments, I imagine that I possess some kind of magical device, and this magical device stops time, but yet it allows me to just sit and read with total concentration and lack of interruption. And so outside the world just takes a pause, and I sit down and I read 600 books, <laughs> and then I and I write up my reviews of them, and then I turn the device off, and life can, the world continues as it is. And, and I am all caught up. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's what's fun about having an inner fantasy life, right? Okay, this one is, uh, ooh, it's from Macmillan. Okay, not sure why I'm getting this sort of thing, but uh, if I don't review it on my channel or my website or something like this, it could be like ridiculously silly, uh, amusing fun, but it's called Shark Beach. What do you want to guess it's about? That's right, it's about uh, time travelers falling in love. No, it's about a beach and there's sharks. A dream getaway is about to turn into a living nightmare. <laughs> I bet you weren't expecting that, were you? No, well, this one comes out May the 28th. And uh, let's see, Rick and Corinne Scully and their kids have visited Florida's Captiva Island many times. This year, they've brought along their best friends who can't wait to finally experience the place the Scullys call paradise on Earth. But this vacation is turning out to be a lot different than planned. Could it be sharks? Let's find out. The Scullies never expected the rowdy college spring breakers renting the house next door. How in the hell do you go to a Florida beach during spring break and not expect partying college kids on the beach during spring break? How do, who are these people? Anyway, I'll go on. Um, or a hurricane that would sweep through the Gulf Coast. How do you go to Florida on vacation and not be aware that hurricanes are a thing that happened to Florida. I, all right, sorry. Uh, or the century old shipwreck that washed up on the shore. Okay, well now that's different a little bit. <sighs> they never knew about the military research being done at a nearby Marine Institute and the test subjects that escaped during the hurricane. In the aftermath of the storm, the Scullies and their friends will try to salvage what's left of their time at the beach. They believe it's safe to go back in the water, but they're dead wrong. Okay. Um, this is not remotely SFF nor uh, horror, really. Um, but it sounds like it could be goofy dumb fun. Uh, the author uh, is described as having once been a bouncer and a liquor retailer uh, and, a, and a, a drama teacher. This is a man, I suspect, who I guess knows his partying Florida card college kids. All right, then. <laughs> if you're in the mood for uh, sharks and beaches, <laughs> then it's uh, this one's available May the 28th. Really, though? I mean, I mean who does that? It's like, oh, let's, let's go to Florida during spring break. Good idea, honey. What are all these partying kids doing here? I do not understand. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a random penguin book. Oh, now this is very nice. This is brand new from Ace, the 50th anniversary edition of Ursula Le Guin's classic The Left Hand of Darkness. I got an email about this uh, two weeks ago or so from Ace, and it was very nice to see that it was coming out. Uh, this is a new trade paperback edition. It has a brand new forward by David Mitchell, 
you know, who wrote uh, Cloud Atlas and The Bone Clocks and all that, and a new afterword by Charlie Jane Anders. And it is out this month, maybe this week, this coming week. It, uh, strangely enough, there's no exact date on it, but it just says, you know, March 2019 is the 50th anniversary of the book. So there you have it. Set several centuries in the future on the planet Winter, where inhabitants' gender is fluid, groundbreaking in scope. It was one of the first works of feminist science fiction and a brilliant study of human nature that provides thought-provoking insight into issues surrounding sexism and gender roles. And I reviewed it last year, about a year ago, uh, on the channel, and I will go ahead and link that review at the end of this video, uh, in the uh, end screen thing. Uh, so you can check that out. I think it was my most viewed video of last year. All right then, so if you haven't had a chance to read this, this is, you know, not many science fiction classics hold up these days, but uh, if Ursula Le Guin wrote them, they do. And this remains, I think, uh, quite a timeless and very influential book. And a good book, too. A very, very emotionally gripping book. All right then, 50th anniversary, The Left Hand of Darkness. And we wrap up this mailbag with something very exciting indeed. This looks to be a new care package from the fine folks at Tor.com Publishing. So let's see what we have in here. All right, so there are five novellas in this stack. Sadly, it doesn't appear that uh, Gideon the Ninth is in here yet. I may have to, like, uh, you know, email somebody and cry very pathetically uh, to see about getting that added. But uh, let's check these out, shall we? This first one looks very lovely. It is a book called Silver in the Wood, and the author is Emily Tesh, and this comes out June the 18th. It says, There is a wild man who lives in the deep quiet of Green Hollow, and he listens to the wood. Tobias, tethered to the forest, does not dwell on his past life, but he lives a perfectly unremarkable existence with his cottage, his cat, and his dryads. When Green Hollow Hall acquires a handsome, intensely curious new owner in Henry Silver, everything changes. Old secrets better left buried are dug up, and Tobias is forced to reckon with his troubled past, both the green magic of the woods and the dark things that rest in its heart. So, Silver in the Wood, Emily Tesh, June 18th. Next up, this one's a space opera, and I very much like the look of it. It's by Una McCormick, uh, and it is called The Undefeated, and it is out on May the 14th. And it goes something like this. She was a warrior of words. As a journalist, she exposed corruption across the interstellar commonwealth, shifting public opinion and destroying careers in the process. Long since retired, she travels back to the planet of her childhood, partly through a sense of nostalgia, partly to avoid running from humanity's newest and self-created enemy, the Ginger. Because the enemy is coming and nothing can stand in its way. Okay, then. Sounds pretty foreboding. The Undefeated on May the 14th. Now, this next one is very, very exciting to me. This comes out July the 9th, and this is The Survival of Molly Southborn by Todd A. Thompson. This is the sequel to The Murders of Molly Southborn, which I reviewed, I think, year before last as part of my Halloween horror uh, roundup. Uh, that one was about, basically, it's a young girl who, through circumstances, you begin to, you know, understand as you read through the novella. Uh, every time she bleeds, uh, she kind of instantiates a new clone of herself which she immediately has to kill, otherwise they will turn violent and kill her. And uh, the reasons for this strange thing are explored throughout the novel. And uh, so now, uh, and, and it's all very dark, and uh, really kind of has a lot of pathos to it. And now we follow up on the story with the sequel, The Survival of Molly Southborn. So, um, yeah, we'll see what's up. Absolutely love that first book, so I'm very excited to see what's in this one. Next, I'm really excited about this. Uh, this is looks like a short novel, not just a novella. This one's a little over 200 pages, and it's a new book by Greg Egan, uh, who's a, a terrific science fiction writer that I'm always happy to see. Uh, this one is called Perihelion Summer, and it is available, it says, April the 16th. And it goes like this. Tarek Zippus is coming. A black hole, one-tenth of the mass of the sun, is about to enter the solar system. Matt and his friends are taking no chances. They board a mobile aquaculture rig, the Manned Jet, self-sustaining in food, power, and fresh water, and decide to sit out the encounter offshore. Uh, as Tarek Zippus draws nearer, new observations throw the original predictions for its trajectory into doubt. 
and by the time it leaves the solar system, the conditions of life across the globe will be changed forever. Really, really excited to uh, check this one out. Perihelion Summer uh, by Greg Egan. And finally, this is really nice to see. Uh, this is the new one by Fran Wilde, and it's called The Fire Opal Mechanism, and it is the sequel to her earlier release called uh, The Jewel and Her Lapidary. But now that book, Jewel and Her Lapidary, was like a novelette. It was like super, super short. Uh, and this is pretty much a short novel. It's like right at 200 pages. And uh, this one comes out, it says... Um, June the 4th, and I guess I can just read this as it is. It says, The fast-paced and lively sequel to The Jewel and Her Lapidary. Uh, jewels and their lapidaries have all but passed into myth. Uh, Jorrit, a broke and branded a thief, just wants to escape the far reaches for something better. Ania, a rumpled librarian, is trying to protect her books from the pressmen, who value knowledge but none of the humanity that generates it. When they stumble upon a mysterious clock, Powered by an ancient jewel, they discover secrets in the past that may change the future forever. So this one is, you know, high fantasy very much. And it uh, looks really, really cool. So, um, yeah, the Fire Opal Mechanism available on uh, June the 4th from Tor.com Publishing. Wow, <laughs> and there we have it. That's what I have for this week's mailbag. You guys know the drill. Hit those comments, light them up. Let me know which of these looks most interesting and exciting to you, which you would like to see me prioritize for review. Otherwise, if you enjoyed watching, please leave a like, share the video far and wide with all of your SFF reading friends, and above all, please subscribe. That is how the channel grows. You can also support SFF 180 at my Tee Public store and at my Patreon. For recruits in the Winx Army get little perks like getting to see some of these videos early. I want to thank those folks immensely for all of their additional support going above and beyond. I very much appreciate it. I want to thank all the rest of you folks for being the very best viewers in all of BookTube. And until I see all of you next time, happy reading.